Welcome everyone, today we have a special guide for Diablo 4. In this video, we'll be looking at in-game Paragon level and also how the Paragon board works. As you can see behind me, we have a lot of notes and also a lot of information about the Paragon points, and also how the glyphs works and how each of the pathing and also of your choices of the Paragon board will affect your gaming style in Diablo 4. We'll also have a lot of notes on the second part, which is about the practical way of going with your Paragon points and also how to ideally get more legendary tiles and also more effects if you use the particular planning trick and also select the tiles using a special method. So I want to share this one with you guys on the second part. I want to show you guys the shortest path of getting your legendaries, your glyphs, and also your special perks. So the first part of the video, we'll talk about the Paragon points, also the Paragon board, and also how to use it. The second part, we're going to the practical practice of how to get the most out of your points. So what I want to do on the second part is, I want to provide you guys with some important information about different milestones. How many exact points do you need to finish the first gate, and how many do you need to get to your next legendary path, and what are the additional tips at level 50, 54, 70, up to 100. So there's a lot to go through in this video. Now coming over to our notes, I'm sure you guys are quite excited for the end game of Diablo, and for Diablo 4, this will be for the skill tree, which is in the form of the Paragon board. Now this starts at level 50 for the characters of Diablo 4, and this finish at level 100. So for the first part, I want to explain everything about the Paragon board and also points with you guys, so you have a full understanding of how this works. Now after level 50, we get 4 Paragon points per level we level up. So at level 51, we'll have 4 Paragon points, and up to level 100, we'll have 200 Paragon points. We can also get 4 additional Paragon points for reaching 1500 Reno for each of the regions. Because there are 5 regions in the game, so this way we get additional 20 Paragon points from the Reynos. So together we're looking at 200 and not so 20 Paragon points at level 100 for the max level character. Now the next question is, what do you use with those Paragon points? So over here we can see some of the previous official teasers for Diablo with the Paragon points. Now the tiles in the Paragon board can range from the different grade of tiles from normal to legendary, and there's also special ones called the socket ones and also the gate ones. We'll go with the grade of the tiles first. So the four different grade of the tiles starts with common, which provides us with a small boost of the stats. Sometimes it's the main stats, sometimes it's the secondary stat. And the next one is going to be magic. Magic is somewhat a little more rare, and if we come over to the skill calculator, you can see the majority of the board is covered in the white, and the next part that majority is covered in the blue. So I think it's about about 65% white, maybe 20% blue, and those will be the most common ones we see in the board. Now the next one, which is a little more rare, is going to be the rare paragon tiles. And for those tiles, there's also a special condition that has to be matched. And the example we had given by the officials was the Golden Rare Hungering Fury. So this one will provide us with 10 bonus fury per kill, and also we need at least 175 strength, and also 125 willpower to activate this. This provides us with 8% maximum fury, which can be really good in some certain spending of the fury build for the Barbarian. And over here you guys can see the golden tiles, they do exist on each of the board, but they are much more rare. So they are maybe about 7 or 6% of the board which are golden over here. And finally, there will be the legendary tiles for each of the Paragon board. So the example we were given is for the Barbarian, when Fury is about 50%, we deal 30% more damage. And if we come over to the build calculator, you can see that for each of the Paragon board which we select, there is only one legendary tile, and there is only one glyph tile, or glyph socket. So this is the case for each of those ones over here, which we'll talk about those very soon. So you get to see a lot of those, and here I'm looking at the Necromancer's tiles, and we'll use this as the example on the next part. Now that we'll briefly look at the different tiles on the Paragon board, the next thing we'll look at is going to be the socket tile. So coming back over to the Paragon board, at the start of your Paragon board, if everything's unchanged, now if things are changed, we'll make a new guide, of course, you can see that there will be a socket tile for the starting of the Paragon board, and the socket tile is actually very unique. Similar to the legendary tiles, each of the Paragon board that you'll be selecting will have one socket tile and also one legendary tile. So this is the case for this one, so you can see the legendary tiles over here, the socket tiles over here. 
Usually the socket tile is placed in the center of the board because this particular tile will benefit depending on the tiles around it. So this is the highlight. It provides various benefit depending how many active tiles is around this tile. Now the example we were given by the Diablo 4 thesis was that there will be different grade of the glyph tiles which can be socketed into the socket slots of the Paragon board and there will be different levels of the tiles. Now because we can both get a higher grade of the tiles and also to get the level of the tiles up, we can see some of the examples that was given. So the first one we can see a magic tile which is going to be the empower tile. It is said to have a small radius. So notice the example that was given to us is a pretty sizable radius but with a lower grade you might be looking at a smaller radius. And notice that this particular radius will provide us with bonus of 30% within the tiles. So what that means is this can be providing with all the tiles you see over here by a 30% bonus. But unfortunately, the socket tiles will not be next to any of the legendaries. So notice a lot of examples over here, the socket tiles over here, the legendary tiles over there. So the socket tile is usually very far away from the legendaries. I think the closest one for the necromancer is this one. And even for this one, there's about five or four distance that they might not be able to reach this particular legendary tile. The next example of the glyph we can see is going to be a rare glyph at level eight. Notice the comparison with the glyph at level 15, which is going to be the median radius versus the large radius. This is going to be the first focus. The second focus is that this tile will benefit the character depending on how many active of the other tiles is around it. So the example over here, notice a lot of tiles have lighted up because of this. So what you're going to see on the next part is, if we're planning to go for legendary tiles, we go directly to legendaries. But if we're going for the socket tiles, we want to perk as many around it to get the most benefits out of it. And here you can see the example is for every 10 dexterity, we will be dealing 13.5% increased vulnerability damage. And this is going to be very powerful because you can see a lot of the tiles over here can provide strength, dexterity, dexterity, dexterity. So we'll be perking into a special tile formation to get the most out of those socket tiles. And of course, we can see the rare glyphs that provide us with additional effects of the special bonus. So for this particular explored rare glyph, we get 40% bonus to all the tiles around it. And for the conquer, you gain four strength for each of the willpower purchase within that range. So this can be very good into getting additional main stats or maybe getting existing main stats to be boosted by 40 or 50%. Now coming over to the last bit of the special theme of the Paragon board, and that's going to be the gate tile. Coming over here, what you're going to see is in the example that was given, the gate tile is associated and also placed at the end of the Paragon board. So what we can see is the gate tile are those ones over here. They are called the special gate tile. And notice that they are placed on the end, on the edge of each of the board. And there will be four of those. So the example that was given by the Diablo teaser was that once you reach the gate tile, you can then select a different board. So for example, over here, we start with this one. We start on this point and we get to this point, which is the gate tile. And then we can pick any of those other tiles that is available for the class. And then what you can do is you can also start spinning the tiles. So let's say if we want to connect this particular dot onto this one. So we'll be spinning this one onto this particular gate tile. Or if you want to connect this one, we'll be spending this 95 or you know 180 degrees onto this one. And this is the example over here. Now, because it will be four different entry points of the gate tiles, what you can see is once we reach this point, which I'll explain this to you guys very soon on the second part, once we reach this point, you then can pick any of the entry points with the gate tile. And this will provide us with the shortest pathing to the legendary tiles we wanted, or maybe to the glyph sockets that we want for the bonus stats. And of course, you can use the keywords over here to search certain tiles, which is actually really helpful. So if I'm going with a corpse build, and here you can see that by consuming corpses, we get 40% more damage when we consume five corpses. So if I wanted, I can start spinning this board, and I started at this point, and I perk all the way to this point. And this way, we can get a lot of good legendary effects very quickly after level 50. Now, coming over to a second part of the video. 
In order to give you guys a better summary, I think it's best we come over to the Diablo 4 build calculator over here. And this is a fan made build calculator, but it's very detailed. I've been using this to build a lot of codecs, a lot of skill trees, and even the specialization. So the thing we're going to focus on here is going to be the Paragon points. Now do keep in mind guys, this is still a work in process, right? We don't know what might change with the launch, but once things change, I'll adjust accordingly with a new video. So we will be using Necromancer as an example. So first we're going to start with a reset. We reset everything and you only start to use your Paragon points after level 50. What we can see over here is there is a Paragon starting node or Paragon starting tile. We can start perking and what I want to show you guys is notice my pathing. It doesn't really matter which side I pick because later on we'll pick the correct side. We just want to see how many points it takes us to get to the first gate tile. And this actually take us 19 tiles. And if we do pick the glyph socket, this will take us 20 tiles. So this is what I mean by here. At level 50, it takes exactly 20 Paragon points to get to the next gate. And this is quite important. If you don't go for the glyph socket, it's only 19 tiles. But I think most of us will go for it. Now, it is very likely for each of the characters, this particular pathing will be the method. And if we come over to the druid, what we're going to see is we can see the druid have a similar pathing as well. So this is what I want to show you guys. So right when you get to level 50, you'll be expecting something like this. And of course, you can path it differently if you want a different, you know, the golden rear tiles. And you can, of course, path it this way as well. So there's a lot of varieties you can path it from. And depending on the build of the characters, we'll have a focus guide in the future build to level 100. So once you get to the gate tile, the next thing you want to do is you want to search for the legendaries you want. Let's say if I'm going for a bone built necromancer, I'll search for bone. Notice that this calculator is very good that I can highlight everything. And of course I have the link for you guys. What I'm looking for over here is I'm looking for all the legendary tiles that will have an effect to the bone mage for the necromancer. And this one is what I wanted. So this bone craft allows me to have higher maximum essence and increased damage for maximum essence. So this is what I want. So what I do is after getting this one, I will be spinning onto this particular board and I'll pick an entry point. So the entry point we can pick is going to be this one or this one. It doesn't really matter. I tried both of those a similar path. So we pick the entry point, we start pathing. Of course, as you're pathing, you want to path to the ones of the tiles you wanted. So notice once I path over there, I can take away the boom. And after pathing, you want to take the shortest path to the next gate. This is quite important because yes, you might want some you know, magical ones, you might want to get the socket over here, but it is not efficient to path all the way over there. It is much, much quicker guys. This is the first tip to path all the way over here. And you might get the golden ones on the way and maybe perk into a few of the magic ones as you go. But the shortest way, of course, is to path into a legendary tile and then path into a gold tile on the way and a few of the magic ones if you can, and then get to the next gate. Once on the next gate, let's say if I'm going for corpse now. So I type in corpse and notice all the corpse lights up. And we look around, we can see there is one corpse over here for the legendary tile. And there is also one over here for the legendary tile. So let's use the example for, which one should we go? Let's use this example. So we're using this example. We'll start pathing, we we'll pick this particular board. Now in case you guys are wondering, so here we're talking about picking boards, right? And we we'll rotate onto the ones we wanted. So here we'll pick this particular board and we we'll path all the way to this particular one for the increased damage and also damage reduction. So we went from the first tile onto the second one, and now we're going from the second board onto the third one. So let's let's give this a go. So we take this way, and once we get here, notice we unlock another legendary tile, and this will give us more effects depending on the skills we cast for each of the classes. Now notice that I'm kind of stuck here. This was this is what I want to share with you guys. Sometimes you just look for the tiles to perk into. And once you perk into it, you're kind of stuck. You don't know where to go, right? Should I go here or should I go here or should I go here? This is when you look at the shortest path to the glyph of the socket. And notice that if I went to the left or right, I don't get much. But if I go for the socket, all of a sudden I can get a lot more benefits as I path myself to the next gate. So this is going to be a method that we're going to look into as we play the game for each of the characters and for each of the build, of course. Because if you're not going for the corpse explosion or corpses, this won't be that effective. So here you can see on the second example of the third board we went, we went for the legendary and then we went for the socket for the glyph. 
And this is definitely optional. So now we finish the third one, right? Let's try one more. So this one, what I want to do is I want to go for another glyph socket. So some of the board is not designed for you to have both. You can go for the legendary tile or you can go for the glyph socket. Some of those boards are made so that you can get both like this one over here. So it is quite important for us to determine what we wanted and how we wanted this. So the last example here is we'll go for a glyph tile. So we can start with any of the side. We can go over this side and we can perk into the particular socket tile. And then we try to perk over here. Of course, we take the path that give us the most golden ones and also the blue ones. So here we have achieved the glyph socket. Now, one thing to highlight with the glyph socket is that it will provide us with benefits depending on the sockets I wanted. So at this moment, maybe for this particular glyph socket, I can also path onto the side, which will give me another golden socket. And this will also allow the radius of the glyph socket to give me more valuable points. I can even perk into more blue ones because the blue ones will give us a higher stats bonus. Of course, you can go with the the white ones as well, the basic ones. If the glyph socket provides us with special effects on intelligence, then yes, we'll go with intelligence around this glyph socket to get the most intelligence out of it and to get the most effect. Because ideally, depending on different board selection, you're either going for the glyph socket or you're going for the legendaries. So here's the example we went for the legendary. Here's the example we went for both of them. Now, hopefully that example help you guys understand a little bit with Paragon boards, and I'm still learning and testing with different build calculators. So here I have counted some of the useful information for you guys. And we saw earlier at level 50, it takes exactly 20 points to unlock to the next gate. And level 54, you have a few choices. It takes you about 12 to 17 Paragon points to get to your first legendary Paragon tile. Now, you will depend on the distance of the travels and also different legendaries. Different legendary tiles will actually take different distance. I've counted the shortest one takes 12 points. The longest one takes 17 points. Now, it is the same distance for most of the glyph sockets. You will take 11 polygon points for any of the gate to get to a glyph socket. So those are some of the things I tested and I counted for you guys, which can be useful as you plan after level 54. Now, if you do have enough riddle points, you can start planning right at level 50. And finally, the shortest path to finish into the next gate will be 21 points, 26 or 28 points. So this will depend on which of the legendaries you pick and how many of the golden ones you're picking on the way. And if you guys remember, we get four Paragon points per level. So after several levels after level 54, we can unlock the next gate while retaining the legendary powers as we go along to unlock it. So here are some of the summary notes. I did a rough estimation. By level 70, you're looking at a maximum of three glyph unlocks and also about two legendary unlocks. And if we happen to have unlocked enough of the radon paragon points, we can up to four glyphs or up to three legendary tiles by level 70. So basically what I did was I counted the variation of the tiles and also movement. And I counted how many of the paragon points we can get by level 70. So this gives us a bit of understanding of how you could allocate your points. And finally, by level 100, you can expect to unlock 5 to 9 glyphs and about 6 to 9 legendary tiles. It is actually much shorter to unlock legendary tiles because with legendary tiles, you unlock this, you go to the next one. But with glyphs, you kind of want to stay over here to get the most benefit out of it. So you kind of want to perk around it. So this is why it's actually more costly to unlock glyphs and also to get the most benefits out of them. And of course, you guys saw the example back there. It is much more efficient to pick the glyph or the legendary. It is very rare that you get a particular socket tile that you actually get to pick both. So this one, we got to pick both. And here are some of the tips I have for you guys as you plan your path before the lunch. So always remember, we're here to go to another gate. We're not here all the way just to get a legendary. We have to plan for the next gate as well. And after that, we'll be picking boards depending on the special legendary effects. And after that, we pick the board with the shortest path to the glyph socket. Because all the glyph socket are the same. It's not like legendary boards. If you're not really worried about legendary boards on a particular board, you pick the shortest path on the glyph socket. So for example over here, so let's go with minions. So this is a legendary board with cult leader, which give us minion damage. If you're a necromancer that's not going for minions, this is actually a really good board to go in for the sockets for the glyphs. 
So this way you're actually picking the correct ones and saving yourself lots of points. And of course guys, remember that if you're going for the glyph sockets, remember that more surrounding tiles that is unlocked gives you more powers depending on the glyphs effect. So the example back over here, you can see that for this particular glyph, we want dexterity. For this one, you want willpower. So make sure you know which glyph will be going to which ones. And this will be very important as we consider the range of the glyphs. Now, for an example over here, we can see the range of the glyphs is about three tiles away. So if we come back over here, this is a glyph. Anywhere around three tiles around this glyph can be buffed. And this is actually quite important because you can be buffing both of those golden tiles and this can give us more powers and also more benefits. Now, hopefully this video is not too confusing and not too long for you guys. I really want to share everything that I know about Paragon Ports and everything I tested for you guys before the video. What I recommend is use the link in the description to try it yourself onto different class and so onto different build and use the search function to check, you know, what are the of the type of the build you want to go for and then try to pick things out. The level over here will show you how many levels do you need to get all of those unlocked. And this can be very nice into planning your build before the launch. And of course, once we get more information at the launch of the game, we have a dedicated guide for this one as well. Now, before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally, instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too, and she's really shy. So I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.